I would like to welcome again everyone on today's Constil webinar. Uh, this webinar will be about the composite beam design according to the Eurocode 4. Let me introduce myself. My name is Duka Roland. I am a support. I'm working as a support engineer uh, at Constil Solutions Limited. I am going to be the presenter today. Some practical notes about the use of the GoToWebinar. You can hide the side panel by clicking the red arrow button and you can ask questions uh, down at the questions tab. And at the end of the webinar I am going to ask I'm going to answer these questions. Please let me promote the uh, the autumn webinar series of Constell 9. Uh, this is a second series. The previous series was about composite column design according to the Eurocode 4. Uh, if you missed this webinar, it can be watched on our official YouTube channel. And one more webinar will be held uh, next week, which will be about plastic analysis and design. This will be held by my colleague, uh, Josef Stolai. So the content of today's webinar is the basics of composite beam design. Uh, I, I will give you a short preview about the regulations of the Eurocode 4. And I am going to show how to design and how to use the composite beam design function in Constell 9. Let's start with the definitions. What is a composite member? It is a structural member with components of the concrete and of structural or cold form steel interconnected by shear, connection, shear connection so as to limit the longitudinal slip between concrete and steel and the separation of one component from the other. Uh, a composite beam is subjected mainly to bending. As for the shear connection between the steel and the, con uh, steel and the concrete, uh, headed studs are used mainly, which has uh, sufficient strength and stiffness to enable the two components to be designed as part of a single structural member. So the composite behavior is ensured by, the headed, by these headed studs, what you can see on the on the top left picture. Uh, as you can see here, the interaction between the two materials, uh, there, is an, there is an interaction between the two materials and they are work as one. While on the right picture uh, shows when there is no connection between the two materials. This, this composite behavior assures the benefits, which are the smaller self-weight compared to a reinforced concrete uh, section. Uh, it grants higher stiffness beside the same load capacity compared to a pure, pure steel structure. It can better be utilized uh, for the different materials. I mean, a uh, steel section can vary the uh, tension force and, and, and the con concrete material can vary the compression force. Some composite beam cross-sections. Uh, these are typical composite cross-sections. The two upper left pictures, pictures show composite beam with constant slab thickness and the upper right picture show, shows kind of a um, of a haunched cross-section. On the lower line, uh, composite cross-sections with profile steel sheeting can be seen. The direction of these profiles can be parallel or perpendicular to the steel cross-section and it also can be continuous or non-continuous at the top range, which determines the calculation method. Some basics about, a basic theory of, 
of designing composite beams. These are the main steps of, of the design process. The first step is, um, is a section classification which, which is very similar to the steel cross-section classification. This determines the calculation method which can be elastic or plastic. In Consteel we, we use plastic design. Uh, elastic is not implemented yet. So the next step is, is to define the effective width of the, of the concrete flange which interacts with the steel section. Uh, and after we, we, we have this effective width, we can define critical sections. Uh, and for these critical sections, there are, there, uh, there are related checks to perform. So the first step in details is the classification. As I said, the, uh, it is very similar to the steel section classification. The only difference is that in case of a, con of a composite uh, beam sections classification is that the upper flange of the section is supported. This section, the class of the section determines the calculation methods and Eurocode allows to use elastic theory for analysis in case 1 and in, ca in, in case of the class 1 and class 2 sections. In these cases, creep, shrinkage and, and the cracking is neglected during the calculation. Only these first and second class sections can be uh, checked in Constil yet, but composite beams in structural architecture are mainly belongs to the first two class sections. As for the resistance, we, in the case of first and the second class sections, we use plastic uh, design resistance, and in class four and class three, it's elastic. The next step is to assess the width of the flange available to act compositely with the steel section. Eurocode gives various methods for calculating the effective width. Um, what is important that during the elastic global analysis, a constant effective width is assumed over the whole of the of the of each span, and for design. Uh, this effective breadth varies along the way of each span. I will talk about this later in details, but it is, it is important to, to mention it at the effective width. So the design, the next step of the design is to define critical cross-sections, which are maximal bending moments, the points of support, uh, the points of concentrated forces, and drastic section changes. There are different checks to perform for different cross sections. For example, a bending, shear, shear buckling in some cases, shear of the headstat connectors, longitudinal shear and crashing of the concrete flange. In the next uh, few pictures I'm going to talk about in detail of these of these performs, of these checks. So about the plastic stress distribution, uh, these figures show these figures shows the plastic stress stress distribution of composite sections in case of positive and negative bending moments. Uh, what I would like to highlight is that if the concrete flange is compressed, the rebars are not taken into consideration for the compression while when the flange is in tension, the tension resistance of the concrete is neglected since it is cracked and the rebar takes the tension forces in the slab and the, and the eye section is, is uh, bended. Depending on the position of the plastic neutral axis, calculation of plastic bending resistance is different. There are three possible variations. 
The first is when the plastic neutral axis is in the concrete flange, this is the first one. The second is when the plastic neutral axis lies in the top flange, this is the second. And when the plastic neutral axis lies in the web. And so there are different uh, formulas for the calculations of the plastic moment resistance. As I mentioned before, the interaction between the steel section and the concrete slab is ensured by these headed stats. If there are no headed stats, the two materials will act without interaction on each other, as you can see on the first um, picture. And depending on the properties of the headed stats, the numbers, for example, it can grant a complete interaction or a partial interaction. Complete interaction means that if we increase the number of the headed stats, it will not affect the plastic bending resistance, so it won't be higher, the resistance won't be higher. In many cases, partial shear connection leads to a more economic design situation, so it is very important. This, the degree of the shear connection is, can be zero or one in the case of complete interaction or between the two, two values in case of partial interaction. When we design with partial shear connection, um, this degree of factor is, is a, is, it works as a reduction factor for the compression resistance of the concrete flange. So this is how we consider this uh, partial shear. Next is the combined bending with vertical shear. Uh, when the vertical shear force is greater than the half, then half the vertical shear resistance an allowance for its effect on the resistance moment is required. For class 1 and class 2 cross-section, the influence of the vertical shear on the bending resistance is taken into account by a reduced steel design strength for the shear area, which is the web section. So this is how, it, how the uh, yielding stress is reduced with, with this factor. Next very important um, check is the resistance of the headed stat connectors. As for the headed stat resistance, we have to calculate the resistance of the shaft of the headed, headed stud and the resistance of the concrete beneath it. And the minimum, the minimum of the two values will give the resistance of, the, of one headed stud and if we multiply it with the number of the studs along the span, it will give the whole resistance for the studs. It is also necessary to ensure that the concrete flange can resist the longitudinal shear force transmitted by the shear connectors. The rules given in the standard can be used to determine the shear resistance of specific shear surfaces. Um, here is one shear surface and this is the second one. We have formulas to calculate the resistance of them. The last what I want to talk about is the crushing of the concrete flange. This means the check of the compression force which is transferred to the concrete. Um, well this was the very basics of, of the design of the composite beams. Next, in the, in the following, I would like to show how to use this function in Constil. So first, I'm going to, I'm going to make a one beam model, and second, I, I will show how to use it in a 3D, in a more realistic model. So let's start with the one beam model start a new model. I'm sorry the language is not changed to English. <clears throat> 
Okay, so we, we start a new model. The first step is that we have to define a section for a composite beam. This can be made with the section administrator model. We have two options. We can load sections from the standard library or we can define macro sections. For composite beams, we need standard or, or, or macro, but I or H sections. Now I'm going to use IPE sections, which I'm going to load from the standard library. I'm going to load IPE 140 to 240. So, to define a composite beam section, we have to click the macro section option and choose the composite beam uh, function. Here we have two, two options as the as the picture shows, the first is the composite beam with constant constant slab thickness and the second option is composite beam with profiled steel sheeting. First I'm going to define a constant slab thickness composite beam by selecting it and clicking the next button. In the following dialog we have many options to to be changed and to be defined. First let's start with the concrete flange. We have, we have to define the B effective uh, width of the flange which, uh, which can be same on both of the I section sides or it can be unsymmetric. But now I'm going to define a symmetric 2000 millimeters wide slab. This B effective is, uh, is, is, uh, is for the graf graphical display of the, of the model and it, it, is for, it is used for defining the self weight of the beam. This is, this is important because as you're going to see the effective width calculation is, is not um, calculated from this value. I'm going to define a C25 over 30 concrete material. I have to give a steel section for, for my composite beam which is going to be an IPE 200 and on the headed stats part of this dialog we can define that one or two uh, headed stats should be applied in the cross on in this cross section. This this picture is a static is a static picture, so it will not change if I uh, click on the one option. But I'm going to use this this only a single headed stats over the web. Next part of the dialogue is uh, is the reinforcement dialog. I mean reinforcement uh, parameters. We can choose the, par the material of the reinforcement. We can use upper and uh, bottom rebars. We can, we can define the concrete cover on these rebars. We can define the diameter of the rebars. We can choose from the drop, drop down menu the proper diameter and we can give the pitch among the bars by a millimeter value or we can define the area, area of free bars. Um, this is good because if I, if I change the pitch among the bars to 200 millimeters the area of the rebars will be calculated automatically. As you can see it is calculated but if I want to put for example, 500 square millimeters by uh, meter square meter um, area of rebars. It will be calculated to to a pitch. 
So this is a nice function. I'm going to leave it at the default value right now. I can also um, choose that which 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 rebars rebars should be nearer to the concrete surface, the longitudinal or the transversal rebars, and I can also change the the and the the elasticity model the supplied in structural analysis. I'm going to leave these settings on default and with the create button the section will be generated. One thing I forgot to set is the concrete slab width height. This can be modified easily by selecting a, a section on the section module and click on the modify uh, button. I'm going to use a 200 millimeters high uh, concrete slab now. Okay, so now we can draw our composite beam section by clicking the beam beam function of Constil. I'm going to draw a six meter long composite beam. And the next step is to define the supports on this beam. Graphical check on these supports can be can can be useful when you want to check if the plate support is is that what you wanted to place or it, or it is not? Okay, um, the other very important thing when defining a composite beam is that we have design parameters. Um, as I mentioned in the on the PowerPoint uh, pictures, different models used for design and for analysis. For analysis a constant effective width can be used and and for design a different uh, different design model will be used. This means that for the analysis model we use a constant effective width amongst the supports. This is a Eurocode uh, procedure and for the design model we can use cracked and uncracked design model in case of uncracked design model, uh, above the supports, uh, a thinner effective width is defined, and in case of the cracked design model, no effective there, there is no effective rest, so the concrete is completely left out of the calculation. So this is very important, and. And the setting that which 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 design model uh, we want to use, cracked or uncracked, can be can be set on the design parameters of the beam. So select the beam and click on the design parameters on the properties. Here we have more options, but let's start with the cracked or uncracked uncracked uh, design model. This is where you can change between them. The first part of the of this dialogue is is where to define uh, that if you want to design a middle composite beam or an edge composite beam. So you can give uh, give the width of the two sides of the concrete flange, and this is this this value will be used for the effective width calculation later. Now I'm going to use an equal beam layout which is 2000 millimeters. Next very, next very important thing is the headed stats, number of the headed stats among the, along the beam. We can use automatic calculation or we can define a specific number 
of the headed stats. Right now I'm going to give 30 headed stats for the for my composite beam. And of course I'm going to show how this automatic calculation works. We can use momentary distribution on top of the uh, top of the supports, but in this case it is not necessary. This is a single um, two supported beam. In the table at the bottom of the dialog is is a uh, is for for the supports. So the first support is at the zero point. The last support is at the end point of the beam. By clicking apply, we can apply these design parameters. And the next thing is to define the loads on the beam. Right now I'm only going to use a minus 25 kilonewton, kilonewton uh, line load. And next we can run the analysis route. Right now I'm going to use a first order analysis. And, and as, as usual you can check all the related results for the, for the beam. But uh, what you can discover here is that the effective breadth of the analysis model which is which is this is first disappears here so to be more expressive I'm going to copy this composite beam and run the analysis again as you can see here on the structural members they are connected uh, since at the section module we gave 200 and 2000 millimeters be effective and uh, as I mentioned this is used for the graphical display and the calculation of the self weight but for the analysis an effective uh, breadth of the concrete slab has to be determined and this is the reason that these slabs are not connected in the analysis model Next step is to check if, if, if our composite member is adequate or not adequate. This can be done on the member checks tab. Click on the member checks tab and, uh, and, right, and here we have to give, select this composite beam and click on the composite beam tab on this, on this table. And by selecting the beam and clicking add button it will be added to this list to this list and we and if you click on it it will zoom to the beam so if you want to check a uh, composite beam you have to first select on the list uh, the beam click select button and it, the selected uh, element will be highlighted with this green background and uh, the checks can be started on the right side of the of the window. We can choose if we want to get first order. Uh, we can we want to get results from first order elastic analysis or from second order elastic analysis. We can also give that uh, what load combinations should be taken into consideration during the during the during the calculations. Now we only have one combinations, and by clicking the check button, the related checks will be performed. What we see here at the results first is that which member were which member's results is shown. Uh, right now we only checked one member. This is the B1 section. The, the load combination can be selected from the drop-down menu and the dominant load combination will be 
we have designed with this little star, we can choose that which cross section, which uh, cross sections results should be displayed. So if I select the zero, which is here, in top of the first support, only this year uh, resistance will be shown of this section. But if I select the middle of the beam, the related checks will be shown. Dominant cross section is highlighted with this little star again. Okay, and the results view contains first a summary, which gathers information from from the calculations and gives us back the the dominant check on the on the beam. Right now it is the plastic bending resistance of the beam. The applied part of the standard is is this and the load combination which gives this utilization is the first load combination. We can check the the these calculations in details by clicking this uh, button. First is the plastic bending resistance. We get utilization as well and some notes that the plastic neutral axis lies in the concrete flange. So the plastic resistance was uh, determined using the proper formula. The shear connection is partial. We have a class 1 cross section. We have the bending moment effect of design as the bending moment design resistance. We can check the position of the plastic neutral axis which is 32 millimeters so it is really lies in the concrete flange. And we can check all the necessary uh, parts for the calculation. Next one is the headed stud connectors resistance. We have a utilization, we have two nodes that the headed stud is ductile which is important for partial shear connections as we have right now. We have the program calculates the minimum number of the headed stats, which is now eight. This comes from from a detailing rules from the Eurocode. The maximum number right now is sixty, and we have this uh, this number of headed stats, which is fifty-two now. This means that if we exceed if we exceed the number with the headed stats, this number with the headed stats, so if I use 53 uh, headed stats, the connection will not longer be a partial connection, it is going to be a full shear connection and the plastic moment resistance will not increase uh, by increasing the number of the of the headed stats. Right now I have 30 headed stats which is lower than 52 so this is a partial shear connection. The utilization is quite low so we can do some modifications later. Next one is the longitudinal shear force. It shows that the uh, that the failure, failure type was the BB section of the of the composite beam cross section which is around the headed studs. Here we have the concrete resistance, the crashing resistance of the concrete flange. They are not dominant right now. It is the since it is the plastic bending resistance. Okay, so now I am going to make some uh, modifications in order to optimize this concrete beam, which can be made easily if we go back to the structural members tab. If you want to modify a section, you can do it very easily by selecting the section and 
at the section properties you click the three dots button which brings up the sections properties and here I'm going to change the height of this composite beam to 150 and I hope this will change the plastic moment resistance of the of the beam I'm going to click click modify and the other thing I would like to change is is the design parameters because I want to show that what happens if you click automatic calculation uh, for the head studs number click apply and we have to run the analysis again since the section properties has been changed and rerun the member check okay so now the utilization for plastic bending resistances is uh, goes up to nearly uh, 95 uh, percent and for the head stats it is now <clears throat> 100 uh, percent adequate this is because when you choose automatic calculation of the numbers of the headed stats it will always give back uh, 100 percent and it calculates an optimal number of the stats over the length of the beam and here you can see that the actual number of the headed stats is, is right now the optimum this optimal number is right now the minimum number of the headed stats coming from the uh, detailing rules from Eurocode. This can be changed so it is not uh, not always the minimum number. In this case we can use the minimum number for the headed stats. Okay, so if for some reason you want to change a section composite beam section for example from from uh, from the constant width constant I mean constant width of the concrete flange from a profiled uh, concrete flange composite beam that can that can be done easily too first you have to define another composite uh, cross section from a macro section and give the parameters of this section again. So right now the alignment of this uh, of this dialog is, is a little bit different than the um, constant uh, with constant with composite beam. We have some more options to more parameters to to uh, adjust. But I'm going to define again a 2,000 millimeters concrete flange, a higher concrete material, two, two, 200 millimeters um, concrete height. And the new thing in on this dialog is that we can choose the profile of the steel sheeting. We have two options right now. Uh, right now we're going to use the first one and we here we here you here you can see the parameters of this profile steel sheeting we can choose if here we can choose if this uh, profile steel sheeting is parallel or perpendicular to the beam it is uh, non-continuous sheeting or continuous sheeting you can give if the stats are valid through the sheeting or they are direct, directly valid to the flange. Because I'm going to use a non-continuous sheeting, I have to define an A value, which is which is this uh, this value, the distance between the two sides of the profile sheeting. 
let's say it is 50 millimeters right now and by clicking create the section will be created and if you want to change the section of the previously generated uh, composite beam you can do it easily I'm sorry but I'm working on a laptop right now it's quite slow so uh, you have to select the composite beam and from the drop-down menu of the section properties you simply have to change the composite beam with profile steel sheeting press the enter button and it will be changed to the new section the design works as the same as in the case of the of the previously shown composite beam so we have to run an analysis and we can we have to click on the member checks tab select uh, the beam and then click the add button it, it uh, will automatically uh, placed to this list where you have to select it with this button and after that you can click on the check button to get the calculation results right now it is far not adequate but I don't really want to uh, optimize it right now let's let's go to the 3d model which is a multi-story building which I have made before we have defined stories I'm sorry but it is Hungarian again so I have to change the language only one moment okay so this is a multi-story building we have stories defined here uh, you can hide the parts of the structure uh, or you can show it with this green graphic we have uh, partial model portions we have predefined loads which are not necessary right now uh, what I want to show is that how you can define edge beams and how you can check uh, by groups uh, on the member check check tab so when you want to define um, an edge beam like this for example first you have to give the BE1 and BE2 the proper uh, values uh, for the graphics and the self-weight self calculation and the other thing is that you define another design parameter uh, a new design parameter for the edge beam by selecting all the all the edge beams and then give them a specific design parameter to select more sections with the same properties the select by property function can be used which is a very useful function this can be called by clicking the right mouse button on the modeling area and click select by property function and here you have many options to adjust right now I want to I want to select all the edge beams so I'm select the composite edge beams and here we can select accurate selection which will select all the sections which are uh, an edge beam or we can add, add to selection if 
for example I want to get all the composite beams too, I'm on the middle, I simply click add to selection and click apply or I can delete from selection so we have many options here right now I want to modify the edge beams details so an accurate section on them is is okay so for the design parameters I have to define that this is uh, this is an edge beam so I have to uh, click out from the equal beam layout and give the distance uh, from to give the distance to B1 and B2 and this is how you define uh, edge beams basically here we can see that we have more supports right now since it is a multi-supported beam uh, this is not has to give manually, but if you click on this button, the program automatically collects the supports for the beam. By clicking apply, you can apply the uh, design settings. And of course, the other, the middle beams, has another design parameters design parameter this is an equal lay beam equal beam layout and and that's all you can give a, a composite member um, a design parameter lay, um, anytime at the at the modeling phase by clicking the drop-down menu and changing the design parameter for that specific beam. Okay, uh, we have to run the analysis. As you can see, the effective width is calculated for the analysis model and next we can go to member checks. Right now we have a lot more uh, members to, to be checked, so I, I'm going to select all the whole structure and by clicking the add button the program will collect the composite members and add to this list down here. This list can be uh, ordered by parameters by name or by uh, by the state of the of the checks. First, I'm going to show that how to check uh, a, a member group. So I'm going to select all of the of the edge beams. Click this select plus button. They are all highlighted with this. Uh, green background, I, I can all again uh, give that which load combinations should be taken into consideration, first or second order analysis uh, results should be used and by clicking the check button the program will calculate uh, the checks for all, for all of these beams so I can I can choose from more members now. The first is always the the most dominant one. The second, the load combination is uh, the third load combination is the is the is the most dominant right now, and I can choose. Uh, cross sections. We have a lot more uh, cross sections right now. The dominant cross section and the dominant stage of this beam is this 6000 millimeters. The dominant stage is highlighted with this green uh, graphical display. This means that 
the headed stat calculations are assigned to this specific uh, length stage and that what the length of the stage can be checked at the headed stat connector resistance here uh, Yes, the length of the segment under consideration is 1,247 millimeters. So this means that from this support to the left, uh, it is 1,247 millimeters long. So the number of these headed studs right now it is two uh, on this one meters uh, segment length uh, to headed stud will will be adequate. Okay. Uh, the utilization is quite low right now. It is 20, it is 50 percent. So what I want to do is to change the section of all of the of the edge beams. I'm going to select by property the edge beams, click OK and I'm going to give an IPE, a smaller IPE section. I have to load from it from the library. It is an I profile. And if it is loaded, I can give the section. Okay, so after we ch have changed the still section for this composite beam, we have to click on the modify button. We have to go to the analysis tab and run the analysis again, since our sections have been changed. And after this, we can go to the Member Checks tab, where we want to check all of our edge beams. We can order this table by clicking on the parameters um, at the top. With the Select Plus button, we can select all of these edge beams. We want to check all of the load combinations and by clicking on the check button we will get our utilization to these edge beams which is almost uh, 100% okay so this is how we check groups with the member check function it is important that uh, those members which uh, are checked in a group has to be modeled with the same geometry and same support uh, conditions. Okay, so one more thing what I would like to show is how are the results of the calculations is being shown on the global checks tab. Okay, so here at the drop down menu we have uh, all of our calculations and the resistances to these calculations are shown. The first is always the dominant calculation which is now the plastic moment resistance of the composite beams since we only have composite beam calculation results right now but we can check the shear stud resistances which is 100% at all structural points right now because of the automatic uh, shear stat calculation but we have shear resistance and all of the other calculations these black um, columns and black beams are black because we these are steel sections and we don't have steel section calculation results at the moment but if we run a steel design across a single cross section check for example
we will have another part added to this drop down menu the steel section, the steel on structural member parts where we also have a dominant calculation which is plastic interaction resistance it is not well utilized so we could do structural changes but not right now if we click on the dominant calculation all of the composite beam and steel sections utilization, dominant utilization will be collected and shown at this table here right now here at the bottom of the screen okay so this is what I wanted to show you at this webinar if there are no questions uh, see you on the next webinar which is going to be held from one week now by my colleague Dr. Szalai József